Good evening and thank you for joining me for the nightly challenge chat for Love Your Lettering. If you're here on the replay and have any questions about what you see, you could send me a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook where I'm also at Creatively. Hello, I know I'm so very late today. <laughs> thank you ladies for coming on in. I know some of you have been waiting. Um, my littlest one is actually still awake, so I'm hoping that she does not run in screaming because she just ran away screaming. Uh, for those of you that might be joining for the first time, my name is Lisa, um, blog at creatively.com, looking at life creatively, and I've been the host of the Love Your Lettering Challenge during the month of October, and we are on the tail end of it. Oh, good. You, it's good timing for you. I know it's really late. It's after 11. <laughs> yeah, she is not cute, though. Not right now. She's very upset with me. <laughs> yeah, not late over in Oregon. Pretty late here on the East Coast, though. Um, so, yeah, I, we're doing watercolor resist today with a gel pen. Pretty, pretty fun. Um, a nice little technique to have under your belt and not break the bank supply-wise because it's just this little gel pen and your watercolors. Um, so how is your day today? As you can tell, I still sound like I have a frog in my throat. I'm hoping that I'm on the tail end of the cold because that would be wonderful stuff. Um, you have my cold. I am so sorry that I shared. Um, left another scope to see me. Thank you. Well, I appreciate having you here. So I'm going to probably just get right to the lettering. Hi, Nancy. Um, you're up planning. Um, I shipped it all the way to Alabama. Yeah, I might have sneezed too hard and it traveled. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I know. I hope so, too. I had some more chicken soup tonight, so hopefully that'll help. Um, it would be good. Did I use the Versamarker attempt? Oh, you okay, Elisa, you used Versamarker. Did you also use um, em, embossing powder over it. I've done that before, but then of course it's the two steps. It's the Versa pen, the embossing powder, and then the heat heat pen or the I'm sorry, the heat tool. So three steps where this little gel pen is just the one step. So okay, then it probably came out beautiful. I have not been on Instagram yet because my my phone was um battery was dead. So you were not able to find the pen at Hobby Lobby. Well, that's a stinker. Um, I'm pretty sure I have seen the glaze pens at Michael's. They might have been in a multiple, um, a multi-pack with different colors. And the only one I really use is the clear one because I like it for this technique. Um, so sorry that you were not able to find that locally. Well, it's still, you can still follow along the technique. Um, if you have embossing powder and a Versa marker pen, um, that definitely will work. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera. So here we go. Here's my sample from today. I like that this is kind of faux embossing because you don't need heat. Um, but this, um, it's the glaze pen from Sakura. Um, I don't know if you can see that if the camera will pick it up because it's white on white. Yes, I I did stamping up many years ago also. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to work right in my notebook. Yeah, so couldn't find it, but Jet Pens had it. Oh, excellent. I know Amazon still has them too. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still sniffly. Um, okay. Clean the tip off. What do you need other than the pen? Just watercolor pens. Well, I'm in watercolor paint. Um, so I have the UB palette. I'm just going to spritz that. Okay. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, Christy, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging in there. Okay, let me get my watercolor pen. Okay, so I'm using kind of the broader pen. And there's still some water in there. Alright. 
saw them in a pack, but you didn't buy it though. Yeah, and I think that that's why I've just gotten it online because I only wanted the white and the clear. I didn't want all the colors. You ordered some henna today? Awesome. Did you order it from Mendika Joey Henna? Um, that's who I usually order mine from. And I've had nothing but excellent, excellent experiences with her. Awesome. Joey is awesome. She does periscopes on here also as well. Um, so to get to see her demonstrate henna techniques is really neat. Awesome. Yes, I love the henna stuff too. So, of course, you can't see what I'm writing yet, but I am writing love. So, it's kind of like working with invisible ink, but I do see that it picks up some sheen from the light. Yes, when I, when I finally get up the guts to mix my own paste, I will be ordering the powder from Henna Caravan. They come very highly recommended. Oh, the dip pen? Yeah, I'm going to have to start practicing that again because I've kind of fallen a bit out of the practice with the use of the brush markers, but I'm sure it's like riding a bike. It's just a matter of practicing. Oh, you did? You went to HennaCon? I would love to do that. That was actually the same weekend as the conference that I was recently at in the Outer Banks. Um, but I have watched the pictures from HennaCon for two years now. And if I could justify going out to California, I totally would do it. Um, because I think it would just be so neat to be around all the other henna artists. Um, but I definitely feel like I'd probably be fangirling over there because I don't consider myself a henna artist. I've just kind of been playing with it um, since following Joey. Um, so I, I feel like I would fangirl over there. Okay, so I colored in the letters and now I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm going to write another word over here. And so I just used the same technique set we did when we did faux calligraphy and the faux typography, where you're just kind of hand drawing in your letters and then going back and making them thicker with the weighted um, where the downstrokes would be. So, of course, if you were to do this on cardstock or a smoother paper, like Bristol paper, this gel pen really does create a very nice resist. And you'll end up with the white background behind the letters. Of course, I'm in the composition book, so the, the tooth of the paper is going to let it absorb more of the ink and water. I'm going to stick a paper towel between the layers of the notebook paper because if you remember from the beginning we taped two pages together so I'm just going to put paper towel through there before I go in with the watercolor so doing that little one-handed <laughs> and that'll just what kind of watercolor paper? Um, I am not too picky. I tend to stock up on water paper. And, um, oh, we're using a gel pen, um, a gel pen for watercolor resist instead of using masking fluid or uh, heat embossing. So, Canson makes a 140 pound watercolor paper that's a really nice texture so I usually will stock up on pads of this paper um, whenever that goes on sale I also like uh, Strathmore so I'm just waiting for those to dry because I don't want to put it on um, I don't want to put the watercolor on while that gel ink is still wet 
So we'll draw a little heart over here. Yeah, I've got uh, Canson marker paper as well. I've been pretty pleased with the quality. I think I have a pad of their pastel paper. Oh yeah, they will go through it quickly. <laughs> I tend to give my children the printer paper until they're working on um, specific pieces, like for the state fair and stuff like that. So you can kind of see where I've drawn in the heart over there. I'm just going to wait for that to dry. These are almost dry. All right. And so now the watercolors in the pan... Um, You're going to use the watercolors. Yeah, we, that's why we buy it by the ream. <laughs> the watercolors for this technique, you're not going to make them quite as creamy as you did when you used it in place of ink. Instead, you're going to make them more diluted for a watercolor wash. Yeah, I like that idea, having them work in the sketchbooks. Except my children are in a bad habit of ripping their pages out. And so then we end up having papers everywhere after all. Okay, so let's see. So now I've got the brush loaded with blue. creates a bit of a resist. Like I said, on Bristol paper or cardstock, when you're dealing on just white, yeah, but I just don't like that my children will pull the, the pages out of the books. <laughs> I want them to keep everything nice and neat. And yeah, tossing paper <laughs> from a child is not easy to do. That's a cute idea to hang their art from yarn. You could put clothespins. Um, that would be good. Okay. So let's see how our love did up here. basics of this technique. It's not really anything, it's not really any new lettering for you guys. It's just a matter of using a different pen. Hi D, welcome. This is the glaze pen from Sakura. So I don't know if you can see that. It's, um, it is linked on the blog post. My blog is creatively.com. And so this is the glaze pen from Sakura. It's a gel pen that's a 3D dimensional pen is how they advertise it. But I found that it works great for um, for like a faux watercolor resist. Ooh, that would be a neat idea to try it in your Bible. Just be sure to put paper towel underneath it because remember that you are putting a little more water on, on the paper than than if you were to use it just as ink lettering. If you will hold on one second, I'll get another finished project of this. So the first time I tried this, so this is on on Bristol paper with watercolors. So you can see it does, you know, leave those resist letters nice and clear. <clears throat> and that's just the glaze gel pen. So 
not really new or complicated technique. It's just a different way to use your tools, which once you start building supplies for lettering, you should, I, you know, want to give you guys lots of ideas to use those tools so that they're not just kind of one, one hit wonders. So unless you guys have questions, this was a, this will be kind of a short scope because there's not really much to show. <laughs> this one was pretty self-explanatory once showing. Um, do I just wipe the water brush on the paper towel during color changes? Yes, I do. Um, I, I wipe the, the brush and then I will usually um, push the water through, um, through the barrel so that I can you know, flood it, or and not really flooding it, but enough water to go through to clear the bristles so that I'm not carrying color between, unless I want to carry color. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. So that was, that was tonight's lesson, pretty simple. And so now, of course, could I show my technique for watercolor backgrounds? Um, does this work on canvases? They do occasionally make um, canvases that are prepped for watercolor. The only thing is that I would probably, if I was going to go through the trouble of doing this technique on a canvas, I would use masking fluid. Excuse me. Because when you're dealing with the texture of the canvas, I don't know that the gel pen is going to be enough to create the resist on there. So I would go ahead and invest in the masking fluid for a project of that size. Um, but on paper, on Bristol paper, on cardstock, um, I would use this definitely because it's quick and easy and there's kind of no fuss to it. Um, which, which watercolor backgrounds do you mean? Um, this, the page that I showed, um, Yes, you can ask a mail art question. I, I know I didn't scope specifically about that yet, but our schedule's been really kind of hectic. Um, so this was done, this page, kind of done the same way that I just showed you with the other ones, except I was putting in more colors. Um, instead of just one solid color over the whole passage, I did little areas of color. But it was exactly the same technique. Yeah, it was not really anything special. That was just a matter of putting in more colors over the area um, and not really blending them, just doing kind of, uh, can't think of the word, just kind of scattered colors. Sorry. I'm sorry, it's head cold. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Elisa, you had a mail art question. I'd be happy to answer that. So those of you that got today's post in email, you saw both. I do sometimes do the water brush, but not in big areas. The masking fluid can either be used for paintbrush. Is there something you can put on top of the watercolor to make it water uh, resistant? Um, you can spray it with fixative. There, uh, I believe Krylon makes fixative. Um, I'll have to look through. It's in another room. I will. I'm going to make a note for myself to check that. <clears throat> Good question. Okay. okay, I'm gonna look up, look and see which fixative I have in the closet, and I will probably add that to the post. How about that, Elisa? I'll get that back to you. Um, you could also use hairspray, um, like Aquanet hairspray, cheap hairspray. Can work as a fixative if you didn't want to get the art supply. Yes, this is definitely a good technique to use for envelopes. It is an eye-popping technique. Um, you could even just do the name, or you could do a greeting with this technique, and then do the address in regular pen. But as, there's a lot of flexibility to it. And like I said, it's just a gel pen, but it's kind of cool. Oh, you're welcome. I do have a question for you guys. So tomorrow is actually the last technique for um, Love Your Lettering. You're welcome. Uh, I know that there are a bunch of dip calligraphers out there. Um, I don't have names off the top of my head because during this course I was trying to be sure not to follow too many other letters because I wanted to be sure that the content I was giving you was original to me and I didn't want, I wanted to make sure I was not borrowing anyone else's unintentionally. Um, 
but there are a lot of amazing lettering artists on Instagram, um, and I'm certain there are probably lots on Periscope as well. Um, it's just that at the moment, I don't have names to give you, because like I said, during this series, I wanted to be sure that my content was original to me um, and not accidentally borrowed. Um, so regarding tomorrow's post, tomorrow's post has our last technique, and it's, ah, oh, that's awesome, Debbie. Um, last technique and it's about mixing lettering styles to create word art um, and then after that the last three posts that I have for um, for the series you have a hard time finding teaching folks okay I know tumbo.com has lettering information on their blog I just have like I said I've not checked out much of that during this series it I will go ahead and look more on that after this series is done, um, just to make sure that I was not borrowing. Um, so tomorrow's the last technique, and then there are three posts that follow that that are really more resource posts and kind of tying it all together. So since we were already behind, and because we won't be adding new techniques, do another class. <laughs> I will think about it, but it might be a little while. I might not be able to host another series like this until winter um, after Christmas. So I was considering putting all three of those resource posts up on the same day because it's not, you won't be learning new techniques. It's really just um, closing out the series with different resources like books and things like that. Yes, all the lettering posts will stay on the blog. They'll probably get their own little tab on the menu. Um, and I will scope tomorrow with the with the um, with the demonstration of mixing techniques. I'm so sorry. I think the head cold is definitely getting to me tonight. Um, so tomorrow will be our last like technique post. Um, and then easiest for me keep it simple yeah I know I'm trying to keep it simple if those of you might have seen some hints on Instagram that we're actually considering putting our house up on the market so things might go from crazy to chaotic crazy real quick around here so I need to make sure that I have things kind of in a row for the blog and social media so that I can pay attention to the things that need to get done putting the house together for that so lots of exciting stuff that would be Lots of exciting, excitingness, especially for the winter season. Crazy. Um, so unless you have any specific questions for tonight's um, technique, I'm going to go ahead and make this the two-minute warning. You've done it completely, Debbie. That's awesome. Pardon me while I blow my nose. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so glad. I've really enjoyed watching all of you put your samples up on Instagram and share them on Facebook. I might have to move all my pens and children. Yeah, imagine. It's, a lot of stuff is going to be in boxes. So it's going to be a matter of narrowing down the supplies that I know I'll need in the next couple months and putting everything else in boxes until we are settled somewhere, um, which will be exciting. But it just means I need to kind of get things wrapped up and pre-planned on the blog. So no new series until January. Share your packing tips. Yes, please do. If you are a pro mover or have had house on the market before with children in the home, I would love some tips. So if you can send me links on Twitter or Facebook, that would be amazing. Um, because this would be quite an undertaking for us. We have six children in the house. Um, six children and a lot of stuff and it's not a huge house so we need to be able to get everything kind of put away and out of the way so that we can be ready for showings sorry sorry <laughs> um so that's all I have for tonight I'm gonna run also thank you for being here it's been my pleasure I will see you guys tomorrow night have fun